creak, creak. In my wedding dress, I stood frozen in front of my husband-to-be's waiting room, where I could hear a strange sound coming from there. What? A small shaking sound of a table, and a raspy voice? A thump, thump. I had a bad feeling and opened the door, just enough to peek inside, hoping not to be noticed. And then, I saw the back of my fiancé, Daniel, standing in front of the table, in his tuxedo. Huh? I realized it. My pride and joy. I secretly peeked at him in his tuxedo, excited about how handsome he would look. But what I saw was a sight of utter despair. I held up my smartphone while I trembled and immediately started to livestream it. The sin that stole my happiness. I'm going to make sure they pay for their sins and that I get the revenge by my own hands. Let's rewind a bit. After graduating from university, I started working as a spatial designer and have been working for four years. Being a designer sounds good, but in reality, the salary is low and there are a lot of work to do during the weekend. I have been working desperately for these four years. Recently, I've been entrusted with designing stores for famous brands, and I'm finally starting to feel like I've made it. At the time when I was getting the hang of my job, I was proposed by my boyfriend, Daniel, last year. I met Daniel through a mutual friend during our university years, and we started dating when we were sophomores. Daniel, who is both academically and athletically gifted and good-looking, is popular. At the university graduation ceremony, he was honored as a student with excellent grades, and he was also an all-around sportsman, excelling in the futsal club. Even after he started dating me, he was confessed to by the girls, who were all known to be popular on campus. He seems like a playboy, doesn't he? That's what my friends would say, but I've never doubted him for being unfaithful. He just has a good personality and good looks that stand out. Daniel has been working as a salesperson for a major parts manufacturer after graduating, and he is considered to have a promising future. Recently, he seems to be busy with work, such as creating sales materials, and often comes home late. He says it's a job that can only be done on the company's computer, and he can't work at home. Given that, I usually go home earlier, so I take on the majority of the house chores, but I'd come to accept that as part of our lives. Recently, preparations for our wedding and meetings with our families have kept us busy, and we've had little time to ourselves which has been a concern. I thought that the worries would vanish once the wedding was over and once we settled into our married life, but I could never have predicted what was to come. Our relationship, which had lasted for seven years since our university days, was about to end in the worst possible way. About half a year after accepting Daniel's proposal, we went back to our hometown to introduce him to my family. My younger sister, Amelia, who was two years younger, had surprisingly came home too during that time. Daniel and I were living in an apartment, 30 minutes drive from our parents' house. Amelia, who lives alone at a convenient distance from both our house and our parents, was meeting us at our parents' house for the first time in several years. Huh? You're home? That's unusual. I hadn't heard that Amelia was coming. Well, yeah. I wanted to see who my big sister was marrying to. Oh, so it's this guy. Nice to meet you, I'm Amelia. She's always been overly friendly, but something about Amelia's sweet, babyish voice bothered me a little. Nice to meet you, I'm Daniel. Daniel greeted back in a gentleman way. The way Amelia grinned at that moment, I felt a strange discomfort growing inside me but I didn't think much of it as Daniel didn't seem to react that weirdly. My sister Amelia and I are polar opposites. Amelia, who is good at winning people's hearts, always gets what she wants. She's not exactly a beauty, but her charming smile captures people's hearts. Despite attending a high school with strict rules, she was never disciplined for things like dyeing her hair or shortening her skirt. I know she received more allowance from our parents than I did, being the older one. From the day she was born, she seemed to know what to say to please the others and act in a way so that she could be liked by the others. 
On the other hand, I was often told by our parents that I was too serious and that I should be more like Amelia. Amelia currently works as a salesperson for a mobile phone company and has been working there for two years, but apparently she's consistently among the top 10 salespeople nationwide. Amelia and I have completely opposite personalities. We haven't fought since we became mature, but it's not like we've had a particularly close relationship either. There were times when I wished I could be more like Amelia, who knows how to get by in the world. But now, I have Daniel. A happy life awaits us. Sure, there were times when I felt envious, comparing myself with my younger sister, but now I'm going to start a new family with the love of my life. At that time, I had a positive outlook on life. Then, three months passed. We finished registering our marriage, and preparations for the wedding ceremony were steadily proceeding along. I was mainly the one pushing forward with the wedding preparations. Daniel, in his fourth year working at the company and starting to take on more responsible tasks at work, has some nights when he couldn't come home due to work. At first, Daniel was enthusiastic about the wedding ceremony, but he gradually showed no concern for it whatsoever. Hey, about the wedding, these guests… I just got home and I'm tired. Can we do this another time? Besides, do whatever you like, I trust you. Oh, and I won't be coming home tomorrow. He would casually dismiss the wedding topic like this. Deep down, I was frustrated, but I took a deep breath quietly to calm myself down. Are you sure you're okay taking on so much work before the wedding? Aren't you tired? I'm fine, thanks. Daniel seemed more swamped with work as the wedding ceremony approached. I wished he could show more concern about it as my fiancé. However, I thought that being recognized at work and increasing his income was a good thing for us as a couple, and I tried to take it positively. In the midst of all this, on a weekday night with only a month left before the wedding ceremony, Daniel had been coming home late as usual, but he came home unusually early that day. You came home early today. Dinner is ready. Before I knew it, all the house chores had become my responsibility. Thanks, but more importantly, I have something to discuss with you. What's wrong? While I wondered why he seemed unusually hyper, I asked him back. Do you want to get new cell phones? If we buy two at the same time, it's a good deal. Someone I do business with said that they can give us a bonus as introducing their services. It's true that I've been wanting to replace my cell phone, and Daniel had been complaining about his old cell phone. But considering the expenses for the wedding ceremony, we should save money here. What are the bonus? New models are expensive, aren't they? It's about $4,000 for two. The bonus is... What? $4,000? Daniel's explanation about the bonus was completely gone after hearing the word 4000 which echoed powerfully. Well, actually, I already bought it. <laughs> Excuse me? He said he had already bought two of the latest smartphones, encouraged by someone he does business with. You just have to pay your share of the device fee in installments. What? We both work. We've become a husband and a wife, but we agreed to manage our bank accounts separately for a while and discuss about it again when we want kids in the future. So he wants me to pay for my portion of the phone he bought on his own? But what's bought is bought, and we can't return it. Speaking of which, we are planning a surprise using smartphones for the wedding ceremony. The latest model can capture beautiful images, so maybe it's okay. Seeing Daniel looking pleased, I lost the will to get angry and forced myself to accept the situation. One month later, our long-awaited wedding ceremony finally arrived. I chose the pure white dress with my mother and my mother-in-law. Daniel, who was busy with work and couldn't help with the preparations much, will surely be surprised when he sees me today. After entering the venue and getting ready, my close friend from university, Myla, came to greet me in the bride's waiting room. Olivia, congratulations! Myla, with tears in her eyes, offered me words of blessing. Thank you. Hey, by the way, do you think that it will go well? It is the surprise I planned and asked the venue staff to prepare. My smartphone is connected to the screen in the venue, and we are set to perform a surprise event where we interview the guests. 
I thought a regular event would be boring, so I asked the staff to do various things in terms of production for this ceremony and had my demands met. I want to pay attention to the details. It's an occupational hazard of being a spatial designer. The guests are already seated, so why don't you try showing the situation in the waiting room like a sideshow? Like the groom's waiting room? You're right. That sounds really fun. Since I discussed and decided on the smartphone performance with the staff without involving Daniel, I haven't told him about it yet. It would be a surprise if I suddenly informed him during the ceremony, so maybe it would be nice to give him a heads up and show him a little bit in advance. I'm feeling excited as I head towards Daniel's waiting room. And in front of his waiting room, I take a deep breath slowly. I bet Daniel looks great in his tuxedo. Thinking that, I open the door a little bit. But then, I heard some noise. A small shaking sound of a table and a raspy voice? I wonder if he's with someone. Let's open the door a bit more. Quietly, so as not to be noticed, I opened it a little bit more. Then, I see the back of Daniel, in his tuxedo, standing facing the table. Peeking in from a bit of an angle, I can see someone lying on the table. Leaning a bit more to take a better look, and to my surprise, I saw Amelia lying on the table. Unaware of me watching them, the two of them are so focused with each other. I was frozen for about five seconds, but understanding what was happening, I got surprisingly calm. I immediately took out the smartphone I was holding and turned on the livestream button. I'll have him be obliterated by the society. There was no sign of the two who were in front of me noticing me, and I kept filming them with my smartphone for the next 10 minutes. The venue staff were excellent, and it seems they had perfectly prepared for the surprise. In the hall with the guests, this entire incident was displayed on the large screen in real time. Ironically, the new smartphone came in handy. The clear image was evident even from a distance while it was all being filmed. Seeing the live stream, the guests were speechless. My parents and in-laws noticed the commotion. and My father-in-law was furious. My mom held back my father-in-law who was saying, That idiot's son! I'm going to punish him right now! And he recorded the images on the screen as evidence. After live streaming the whole incident, I stayed hidden and watched the situation. I strained my ears to listen to their conversation. Didn't you say that you wouldn't go back home when Olivia and I went to greet your parents' house? It seems they're talking about the time we went to greet my family half a year ago. Sorry, I just thought it'd be fun and popped in. My sister was a bit sulky, wasn't she? She looked hilarious. It was tough pretending that it was our first time meeting with each other, but we weren't found out, were we? Anger wells up inside me. Was all that pretending to be meeting for the first time just an act? I can't believe they've had a relationship since half a year ago. She basically never suspects me cheating. I've never been caught since university. This guy was a serial cheater, huh? I couldn't stop trembling because of all that anger I had for him. I momentarily became dazed with shame and emptiness for not doubting his infidelity even once in the seven years we've been together since our sophomore year in university. As the two adjust their clothing, they start heading in this direction as if nothing happened. Oh no, I'm going to be discovered. I step away from the door for a moment and head for the family waiting room. When I enter, both my parents and my in-laws are there. Everyone seemed to be at a loss for words. My mother couldn't accept my sister's betrayal and was sobbing. Although I should be the one crying, oddly enough, I didn't shed a tear and just stood there silently. Then, unaware of anything, Daniel and Amelia entered the room. Dad, how do I look with my tuxedo? Daniel being like that is exactly what ignorance is bliss means. You. My father-in-law trembles in anger. Huh? What's with you all? How dare you? My mother-in-law and my dad desperately hold back my father-in-law who looks ready to punch him. With great effort, I calm myself down and my mother-in-law explains everything that has happened to the two of them. 
Then, their faces turned pale as a ghost. Well, this is... um... Explain everything right here, right now. Apparently, they happened to meet through work. It was about three months after Daniel's proposal. Daniel, who works at a parts manufacturer, met Amelia, who works at a mobile phone company at a social gathering between the two companies. Unaware that Amelia was my sister, Daniel seduced her, and it seemed to have developed into an affair. He was surprised when he found out that she was my sister, but he didn't end their relationship. Apparently, Daniel had been having regular affairs since his university years. To have not noticed and married him, I am ashamed of how insensitive and unaware I was. Oh, I want to marry you, Olivia. I guess you could call this as me being too young and not thinking about the consequences at all. I couldn't help but cheat. I'm really sorry, but I swear. I'll turn over a new leaf and be devoted to you from now on. Really. Even if he apologizes, it's too late now. I've decided to divorce him. I have nothing to say to this utterly irrational, stupid man. But let me just say this. When you apologize, you should say, I'm truly sorry, right? Why don't you just start over as a grown-up? Huh? Oh, I'm truly sorry. My sister Amelia remained silent, looking down. She is still trying to rely on others, even at a time like this. Instead of anger, I pitied her for that. I left Daniel, who didn't want a divorce, behind as I left the waiting room. I hate my serious personality, even at a time like this, but now, handling the guests is the top priority. I headed straight to the venue and went around apologizing to the wedding staff and the guests. All the guests looked at me with sympathetic eyes. Daniel's associates, friends, and colleagues said, We will make him take responsibility. At that time, my feelings of disappointment were stronger than my anger. But there were people whose expressions couldn't hide their outrage as if it was their own matter. Above all, it was clear that the two had lost their social status credibility and all the relationships they had built so far with many people. One week since the nightmare wedding, the company's executives also attended Daniel's wedding, and Daniel lost his position at work and had to resign. Several of our mutual friends from university were also invited, but all of them said they had cut ties with him. Amelia was also fired because Daniel's workplace had contacted her workplace regarding their affair. They were disowned by their parents, who had loved them so much. I claimed damages from the two of them and filed for divorce. Two months had passed since the wedding, and just when I started to think, was that incident really a dream? I received a call from the venue. To my surprise, they invited me to work as a wedding designer. Apparently, they appreciated my abilities as a designer in the planning and production of this wedding. For me, who was seriously considering career advancement after the wedding was cancelled, it was a dream come true. I accepted the offer without any hesitation. Now, I'm a wedding designer and have become a bit of a known in the industry. I'm working hard every day to make other people's weddings happy, even though it's ironic that I've had a terrible wedding experience. By the way, as for the smartphone, I put it up for sale on a certain online marketplace right after the divorce. I guess Daniel bought the two phones for my sister at that time. Since this was a new model that had just been released, I was able to sell it for the same price as if it was new. With a payment for damages I received from Daniel and Amelia, and this money, I'm thinking of going on a very nice, luxurious solo trip.